everybody welcome back to the channel now as incredible as it sounds they are around only i think six weeks left for 2025 to be finished and to 2026 to start and you know what happens whenever new year starts right psychologically people start making new plan they look at it as a new start a new way of beginning and they start making their plans for the year so that's why i thought this year i'll make this video a little bit earlier which is about some advice i want to give you for your 2026 career in cyber security and this advice is applicable whether you are starting out or whether you are like 10 15 years along in your cyber security journey i felt that this was this would might help a lot of people in their cyber security careers because this is based on the problems and the questions i am getting more and more from people on linkedin on youtube so i thought why not make one video that uh, you know gathers together all this advice which i feel might be helpful to people so uh, one very important thing this is not about like you know doing the next hot certification what is the hottest certification for 2026 or what is like the most popular tool no i would rather talk about certain things which are you know which will help you change your mindset and set you up for a long-term success and these are the lessons i wish i had given myself also you know when i was like 15 20 years ago i would have really benefited from these lessons uh, if I had been able to give myself. So that's the reason I thought, why not make a video and give some good old fashioned career advice again. So first of all, I want you to understand, and I, this is a mistake I see a lot of people making in cybersecurity, which is waiting for permission to grow. You know, the clear, and it's called the career plateau, where you flatten out in your career. You're not growing because you're waiting for something external to happen. You're waiting for the CISO, for the head of cyber security for somebody outside to like give you that push before that happens and you know it it i've heard this so many times from people across the globe across countries in cyber security they say i'm waiting for the manager to give me the go ahead for this new project or i'm waiting for you know ai to come into my company then i'll start learning like generative ai security and they are waiting for a promotion for that manager title to come and then i'll start mentoring people once my manager approves this budget i'll start create a home lab they're just waiting for something to happen and what happens is your career flatlines because you are waiting for permission to grow please do not do this nobody is i can assure you nobody cares about your career more than you do so you have to take that initiative do not wait around initiative always always beats waiting and if you are waiting for somebody else to define how you will grow in cyber security you are already falling behind right nobody is going to hand you growth opportunities so take that step like they create that course start mentoring someone learn that new technology whatever it is do not wait for something external to happen like a promotion like a raise like an increment because if they dot, that does not happen you will simply start waiting again so do not wait that it is one of the most dangerous career plateaus that can happen it's it completely flattens your career if you make this mistake and it might cost you years before you realize you've made this mistake and the other thing after this, the other thing I want you to really understand is growth is not linear in cybersecurity. This is a common, common mistake that people think. They, they, they tell me that I'm an analyst and I'm, uh, I haven't become a CISO and it's been like 10 years, I'm a failure. I, I have no idea why becoming a CISO is, is like the benchmark for success. This is a common myth which is holding people back. They think it's a straight line. So from an analyst, I'll become an engineer, then I'll become a manager. And then I'll become a CISO. But cybersecurity does not work like that. It's like you can you can pivot a lot of time. I actually went from being a CISO to going to cloud security because I found it much more enjoyable and I found that I was able to get in touch with my technical side, right? And I'll talk more about that later. But you can continue to experiment with your career. I know people who are in penetration testing, wet teaming, they're earning way more than CISOs. They are independent consultants, but because of their expertise and because they pivoted within the industry, they are able to like capitalize on that skills. OK, so this is what real growth might look like to you in cybersecurity, moving, moving sideways into cloud security to learn architecture. Right. You decided for two years, I'll just go into cloud security or maybe from a technical role. You decided to jump into GRC to understand how risk and governance works and that completely opens up a new pathway for you. Or maybe you are in like me, a cloud security consultant. I decided to go into product security, you know, pre-sales to understand how security is fitting into design or how security is being designed from the services. Or maybe you switch industries for 15 years. You've been in banking. You decide to move into healthcare. 
you want to learn about the new risk models it is entirely possible it is not linear your path is not fixed okay that you have to go along like this you can completely switch around and see what works for you and that might open up it'll take you out of your comfort zone and that might open up completely new pathways for you which you did not even realize okay uh, the third one and that goes directly into this one which is the comfort trap staying too long in one job now uh, at the same time i'm not telling you to please put in your resignation today and you know start searching for a job the job market is not good right now unfortunately the tech market law thousands and thousands of people have been laid off thousands and thousands of people you know uh, have entered the job market and they're looking for jobs so it's very very competitive but at the same time if we've been in the same role for five to seven years you can ask yourself is this still challenging or is it just making you comfortable you don't have to leave the organization you can move to a new role okay but if you're in your comfort zone and you're not learning that is a major major trap that happened to me i was i became too comfortable in one position and then i realized i did not know much about devsecops about cloud security i realized that the market had passed me by and i had to really change my mindset and restart from scratch to catch up where the industry was so you don't have to leave the company take a look at maybe there's a like new roles available which might be more interesting to you so please do think about this how you can move around how you can pivot and find new opportunities uh, to grow do not get too comfortable in one job because if that comfort zone is taken away from you you will be in big trouble the other one is the ego lesson and, and from that's insecure to how we can fix it and this is especially for my newer colleagues my younger colleagues in cyber security i used to make that mistake uh, especially when i started out when i had like i was responsible for signing off things i thought that being a security expert means i have to say no to anything that no this is not secure no we cannot deploy this know that violates policy i thought that is what the job of cyber security was now i say yes but and then we show them a solution and this really by having this attitude of saying no all the time you know what happened people started bypassing me people thought of me as a blocker and they thought this guy is not going to help us uh, with our initiative let's just try to go around him or let's just not tell him about the things that we are doing so security is not just about saying no about control it's about collaboration now you can say we can do this but with xyz controls in place here you can tell them hey look you can do this but this is the risk that will get introduced here is a safer way to achieve your goal and here's what this means for the business if you are able to actually tally it you do not have to go into long drawn out technical lingo just start with these three sentences i believe you it will change your mindset how you approach people and you will see that people actually like the way because they see that you're not blocking anything you're actually allow, helping them reach their business goal but xyz controls in place this is one of the big mistakes i made in my career okay what else another advice i would give you and this is something i've always felt that people don't pay attention to much which is the invisible skill in cyber security it is teaching others uh, one time a, a person came to me and they wanted to learn iam in aws you know and i sat down and i explained to him this is how iam works this is the technology this is how it works this is the flow and i realized that by explaining it to them i actually understood it much better and that's honestly one of the reasons i make courses in cyber security on udemy or on my own academy because i always feel that by teaching it i understand it much more better you don't have to be an expert people tell me I, i'm not an expert man i can't mentor somebody or i can't write about somebody you don't have to be an expert you become one by explaining stuff right so go ahead and you you can mentor somebody you can write a linkedin post you can create a small internal guide within your own company it forces you to be clear and the more clear you are the more you will grow within cyber security but it will force you to learn more it will take you out of your comfort zone this is something i really feel people sleep on and they have no idea how much they can help the next generation of cyber security professionals by simply adopting uh, the skill of teaching the other one is focusing on depth and not on decoration and what do i mean by that if you can see my shelf behind me you see all those awards and certifications and all that right i i don't mean that please go right ahead and win awards and all that i'm talking about becoming a certification factory and if you've watched my videos you know i always try people please certifications are not bad go ahead and do that cissp or the ccsp do not become a certification factory which is you're doing cert after cert after cert if you are stacking certs that is not the same as stacking skills and 
what people do not realize that certifications also have a hidden cost the time you could spend applying that knowledge instead of jumping into a new certification after you've done the cssp why don't you do a risk assessment for somebody why don't you actually see how you can apply the encryption controls that you learned about how you can review a legal document based on the legal domain within cyber security you know that because all you're doing is stacking up certifications which you're not applying that knowledge so that energy you could use writing building or experimenting or you know you could instead of wasting that money on a, like two thousand dollars on another certification you could get a lab you could get cloud credits and get hands-on skills which will help you considerably more uh, within your career so think about that there is a hidden cost of being a certification factory it's not just about doing stuff again and again if you're saying that my company will pay for the certification okay they will not pay for the time that you are spending doing this certification so think about that right so here's the secret that senior people know that skills compound like interest the more if you focus on skills it will compound and it will teach you more right when you learn cloud, it will make your risk management sharper because you will see the new types of risks like the shared security model, the shared responsibility model within the cloud. When you understand GRC, you will be able to make your security architecture decisions more, more defensible. You will be able to say, hey, we cannot do this because without segmentation, we will violate PCI DSS or XYZ, right? Each skill will amplify the other. So focus, in, if 2026, you were thinking, I'm going to do five more certifications, Please, I would rather you do one certification and focus on getting hands-on skills instead of uh, spending too much time on that. Lastly, redefining your success criteria. And like I said, I talked about this before. For many, many years, I thought I had to become a CISO. Without a CISO, I'm a failure. And I did it. Uh, I even won that CISO of the Year Award in 2019. But honestly, I did not like it. I, I Most of the time I was paying in meetings, playing budgets, politics, PowerPoint slides. I was spending more time in PowerPoint and Excel than in actual security work, you know. And I felt very detached. It like really impacted me and I felt completely frustrated with this position. And that's why I moved back into cloud security. And I realized that not every promotion is progress. It is entirely possible to earn the salary of a CISO by becoming an expert in your field like AI security, like cloud security, like penetration testing. You just have to become very, very good at it. So it is entirely possible to do this. So redefine, find out what your own success criteria is, you know. Maybe it, you can move sideways into something that makes you more interested in cyber security, whether that's GRC, AI security, cloud. I am today much more happier, you know, being a cloud security consultant because I'm doing stuff which just interests me. And much more uh, better than making PowerPoint slides and Excel spreadsheets and answering emails and attending meetings. So define what your success criteria means and don't let anybody guilt you that, oh, you're not a CISO, you should have been a CISO by now. That's complete bogus. You don't have to let anybody guilt you into becoming a CISO. Take it from me, who was in this position for many, many years. And the final reflection, I'll tell you. Uh, as we head into 2026 that you know this all of these things I've learned from like failure and discomfort and reflection so these are the things I want you to think the certifications do not equal skills if you're getting too comfortable that will kill your growth and having an ego it will block people from trusting you and the more you teach it will accelerate your uh, mastery that is there so just i hope this was useful to you i i really wanted you to take to heart these lessons which i'm telling you and i've tried to apply them within your career i guarantee you will see some measure of success if you focus on these in 2026 i'm wishing you all the best of luck in this new career which is coming along uh if you found this video useful please do like and subscribe to this channel and share it thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video